Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to illustrate a tax applied to correct a negative consumption externality. I have a previous video illustrating that, uh, highlighting the impact on an indirect demand curve, but in this case, we'll provide a more elastic demand curve and just a straightforward graph and analysis. This is a very recent example. Um, here we see in Hawaii the proposed um, luxury tax on luxury cars, in this case, gas cars. So we want to discourage the consumption of gasoline cars due to the negative externality of consumption. As you drive that car, you are emitting carbon emissions. And the tax revenue gained by this luxury tax would then be used to pay for electric vehicle infrastructure. So an interesting proposal in the state of Hawaii. You can uh, look for this online and read a little bit more about this proposal. You can see here the tax, I believe is 1% general excise tax on cars priced at more than at $60,000 and up. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to start drawing this from scratch because since this graph uh, has two supply and two demand curves, you know, some students might have a little bit of difficulty or as they draw it, they might get, um, they might mislabel a few areas. So this will be my recommendation of how to draw this. So we're looking at an indirect tax applied to gasoline cars to correct a negative external of consumption. This is the first solution that we're proposing, a Pagovian tax to correct this. So let's go ahead and illustrate this. All right, so uh, the demand we're gonna assume is fairly elastic uh, because this is a luxury good. So we will draw a fairly elastic demand curve. D1 equal to the marginal private benefit of consumption. And the supply curve we're also going to state is going to be fairly elastic all right, due to um, it being a manufactured good. Not necessarily with uh, high-end exotic cars. They're fairly custom built, but let's just assume that. All right, so in both cases, <clears throat> we're going to assume that the PED for the demand curve is greater than one because it's a luxury good. And we're going to assume that the PES for cars is also greater than one due to the fact that it's a manufactured good. So the equilibrium, all right, where S1 equals marginal private costs of production by the private firm, will generate an equilibrium price in the free market and quantity in the free market. So we're going to draw PM and QM. All right, price in the free market and quantity in the free market. Because the uh, there's no problem here on the supply side, we're also going to label that the marginal private cost is equal to the marginal social cost of production. Okay, so gasoline cars. Society would like less consumption of gasoline cars due to the carbon emissions, the impact of carbon emissions on climate change, human uh, health uh, within the cities, all right, rising perhaps uh, lung disease problems as a result of the uh, uh, breathing in the carbon emissions. So we're going to illustrate a second demand curve to illustrate that society would like less consumption of gasoline cars. So that's at D2, which is equal to the marginal social benefit. And we notice, all right, when we compare point A to point B, we notice that at quantity in the free market, the marginal social cost, all right, point A, we're touching marginal social cost, is greater than the marginal social benefit, which we see here. All right, that generates a welfare loss. Society would like less. There's an overallocation of resources to the production consumption of gasoline cars and society would like less. So that social optimum appears at the intersection of S1 and D2, providing the, the optimal price. <clears throat> providing the optimal price at P opt and the optimal quantity at Q up. So we have just drawn a uh, negative externality of consumption. Okay. 
Now we want to apply the tax to it. So I would recommend that at QOP you draw a straight line to highlight where the supply curve will intersect. So here I'm going to draw this line up to here. and That's going to highlight where the supply curve is going to intersect. So I'm going to draw that second supply curve through that point. And this will be in parallel to S2 approximately. So here we have S2. Okay, so this is how I would recommend drawing this graph. First, MPB, MPC, point A, the intersection PM, QM. Then draw the decreased demand, right? The social optimum, society wants less demand. P opt, Q opt. And then at Q opt, draw a straight line upwards to highlight where the second supply curve will intersect. So we're going to label this. S2, which is equal to S1 plus the Pogovian tax, tax on each uh, unit or output of car produced. You can also say that's equal to the marginal private cost of production plus the tax. All right. So that has an intersection of D1 and S2 at point D, and that intersection will raise the price paid by consumers from PM to PC, all right? So the price paid by consumer rises from PM to PC, and then the price received by producers falls from PM to P-opt, which is also equal to price received by producer. Okay, and then we are done. We have fully drawn this. So I'll go ahead and analyze this as we would for a paper exam. As can be seen, we have graph A illustrating an indirect tax or a Pagovian tax on gasoline cars to discourage the consumption of those cars. We're measuring the price of those cars on the y-axis and the quantity supply and demand of those cars on the x-axis. We have two upward sloping supply curves in accordance to law of supply, S1 and S2. S1 is equal to the marginal private costs, which is equal to the marginal social costs, because we're assuming that in the production of gasoline cars, there's no externality. We have two downward sloping demand curves in accordance to law of demand. D1 is equal to the marginal private benefit, the household's private consumption of gasoline cars. We notice where MPB equals MPC, it provides a free market equilibrium at point A, providing the equilibrium free market price at PM and the equilibrium uh, free market quantity at QM, where quantity supplied is equal to quantity demanded. Um, we notice, though, that at QM, the marginal social cost of the consumption of those gasoline cars is greater than the marginal social benefit. This is a result of the carbon emissions emitted from these cars as households consume those cars. So that generates a welfare loss, which is seen in the shaded area. Society would like less. So social, social optimum would be achieved where MSC equals MSB. Thus, D2 is equal to the marginal social benefit. It highlights that society would like less demand for gasoline cars. So allocative efficiency is achieved where MSC equals MSB. That would provide the optimal price, the social optimal price of P-opt and the social optimal quantity of Q-opt okay, at point C. The government intervenes and they decide to apply a per unit tax, right? So we're looking at a potential solution to achieve the social optimum level of output, and that is the application of an indirect tax. So there's a tax applied to each unit or each car produced by the firm, and as a result, that has the effect of shifting the supply curve inwards from S1 to S2 shifting it in by the amount of the, of the tax. So S2 equals S1 plus tax, which is equal to the MPC curve plus tax. That creates a new equilibrium at point D, where S2 equals D1, raising the price paid by households from PM to PC. That reduces the quantity demanded along the demand curve from point A to D, or from QM to Q opt. That also reduces the price received by the producer from PM to P opt, which is equal to price received by producer. 
the lower price received by the producer reduces the quantity supplied from point A to point C or from QM to QOP. Thus, the indirect tax in, in theory is successful in achieving the social optimum quantity of Q opt. All right, so that's it. That is a, uh, an explanation of how to graph this uh, solution and also how to analyze it for a paper exam. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.